It's no secret that riding motorcycles is fun, but there is a state of enjoyment that goes way beyond simple pleasure. It's an experience of being physically and mentally present in the moment, where your attention is pinpoint focused and you are one with your motorcycle and the road. People often refer to this as being in the groove or in the zone. I'm Ken Condon. I've been riding motorcycles for over 30 years as a commuter, trail rider, tourer, and road racer. During the past dozen years, I've been involved in educating hundreds of new and veteran riders as a Motorcycle Safety Foundation rider coach and as a track day instructor. I also reach thousands of motorcyclists as the author of the Proficient Motorcycling and Street Strategies columns for Motorcycle Consumer News. Now I have the opportunity to share with you in the context of this book and video things I have learned that will increase your confidence and make riding safer and more fun. This video is not a replacement for the book, rather it is a companion that will enable you to better understand and visualize each concept and technique. If you follow along with me, I'll help you to become a safer, happier motorcycle rider. Mental Skill Development Let's begin by talking about the critical thinking skills you need in order to ride with confidence. It's my belief that superior mental skills minimize the need for superior physical skills. For example, a missed clue about an oncoming car turning left in front of you results in the need for evasive action, whereas sharp skills for detecting potential hazards before they happen results in little drama. This requires being alert to your surroundings and developing a sixth sense about the environment. By recognizing when something seems out of place, you can respond swiftly to minimize danger. One of the most common traffic hazards you face as a motorcyclist is an oncoming vehicle turning left across your lane at an intersection. A few strategies you might use to avoid a collision with a left turner are slowing as you approach intersections, covering your brakes in preparation for a quick stop, and planning ahead for a possible escape route. Safe following distances and effective lane positioning are other important tactics for avoiding collisions. You must develop a sharp sense of where to position yourself so other drivers can see you and so you can see them. Proper lane positioning also allows you to maintain space between you and surrounding hazards. Perhaps the most effective strategy for being safe is to ride at speeds that are considered reasonable for the conditions. It's also important to ride at expected speeds. If you approach an intersection, five or ten miles per hour faster than what other drivers would consider normal, you shouldn't be surprised when a driver proceeds into your path thinking he or she had enough time to make it. Vision We can't manage risk effectively without dependable and timely information. Our most reliable sense for assessing danger is our eyesight. Our eyes scan the riding environment and send a signal to the brain telling us whether the picture that you see through your face shield hints of a threat or not. Visual information tells you whether you are approaching a corner too fast or whether a car might collide with you. Gather as much critical information as possible by scanning left, right, and down at the road surface to identify possible hazards. Also, don't forget to scan your mirrors. Your vision also helps you achieve cornering confidence through visual direction control. Visual direction control is essentially letting your eyes tell your mind where you want your motorcycle to go next. Train yourself to turn your head and point your vision through the corner, toward the exit. Look where you want to go. Visual direction control is great for helping direct your motorcycle, but it can be a problem if your eyes fixate on what you perceive as a threat. This is commonly called target fixation. The problem with target fixation is that your eyes and attention tend to steer your motorcycle directly toward what you're looking at, whether that is a car crossing your path or the outside edge of a corner. Look at the solution, not the problem. Traction Sense In this segment, I'll talk about traction and how you can develop a traction sense. Your traction sense is based on factors that affect the quality and quantity of available traction. These factors include tire condition, tire temperature, road temperature, and tire load. Traction is also affected by pavement condition and surface quality. With these factors in mind, you are able to determine just how much you can accelerate, brake, and corner 
while maintaining traction. The first step in developing this sense is to understand that any one of these forces can eat up the entire limit of available tire grip. Driving forces from acceleration can spin the rear wheel. Side forces from cornering can cause a slide, and braking force can cause a front or rear tire skid. If you execute any two of these actions at the same time, you increase the risk of a fall. For example, if you use 90% of the available traction for braking, there's only 10% of the grip remaining to turn or perform an evasive maneuver such as a swerve. The amount of traction available also depends on how much weight is pressing the tires onto the road. For instance, hard braking shifts weight forward, which presses the front tire onto the road surface and increases front tire grip. Unfortunately, this forward shift in weight also lightens the rear tire, which reduces rear tire grip. To preserve traction, it's important to avoid abrupt shifts in load, break early and progressively to minimize fork dive, and ease off the brakes smoothly to minimize abrupt spring rebound. Braking is discussed in more detail in the next segment. Physical Skill Development Having strong mental skills, good visual acuity, and a keen traction sense will give you a huge boost in safety and enjoyment. However, to experience the most joy and confidence, you must also have excellent control skills. In this segment, I'll talk about braking, cornering, and shifting, as well as how body positioning can enhance control. Braking. Too many riders assume that their braking skills are perfectly fine. That is, until they skid out of control trying to avoid a hazard, or fail to use all of the available braking power and collide with a car or other obstacle. Front brake. In most street riding situations, it's smart to use both brakes. But it's important to know that the front brake provides the lion's share of stopping force. This is because of forward load transfer and the increased front tire traction that results when you apply the brakes. Even though front tire traction increases when the brakes are applied, abruptly grabbing the front brake can cause a front tire skid. To avoid this, you must squeeze the front brake lever progressively to allow time for front tire traction to increase to a point where it can handle maximum braking power. Squeeze, then squeeze harder. Most modern brake systems deliver impressive stopping power, which means maximum brake force can be had with two-finger front brake operation, usually your index and middle fingers. The advantage of two-finger braking is that it allows your other two fingers to remain on the handlebar for better control and to allow you to roll on or off the throttle for smooth brake and throttle transitions. Be aware that heavyweight or older motorcycles often require four fingers to deliver enough brake pressure to stop quickly. Rear brake. So the front brake delivers the majority of stopping power, but it's important not to ignore the value of the rear brake. Not only does the rear brake help shorten stopping distances, it's also useful when slowing on slippery or loose surfaces where the front wheel might lock too easily. Unfortunately, rear tire traction is reduced when you apply the brakes because forward load transfer takes weight off the rear tire. The harder you brake, the less traction your rear tire has. To avoid a rear tire skid when braking hard, you must reduce rear brake pressure as the load shifts forward. Braking drills. Practice is the best way to perfect your braking technique. It also helps make proper braking technique a habit, which increases the likelihood that you will respond effectively in a situation that requires excellent braking control. Choose a parking lot where you can safely ride in a straight line and which will accommodate a circle that is about 100 feet in diameter. That's about the width of 10 parking spaces. Please use common sense when performing these drills. Wear full protective gear and choose an area that is clean and unobstructed. Number one, smooth braking. Braking drill number one will help you recognize the benefits of smooth braking actions which includes minimizing chassis pitch and abrupt changes in traction. To perform this drill, accelerate to a speed of about 25 to 30 miles per hour. Then apply the front brake only. Do not come to a stop. 
Notice how applying and releasing the brake progressively causes the front forks to compress and rebound smoothly. Continue to practice squeezing and releasing the front brake. Apply the front brake by curling your fingers over the lever and squeezing smoothly and progressively. Release the front brake just as smoothly by straightening your fingers as you gradually roll on the throttle. Number two, straight line braking. Braking drill number two will familiarize you with how each brake alone and in combination affects stability and stopping distances. To perform this drill, you'll need an area where you can ride back and forth and brake in a straight line from about 20 to 25 miles per hour. For part one of this drill, come to a normal stop using the front brake only. This drill is intended to increase your sense of the front brake's power and how it affects chassis control. For part two of this drill, come to a normal stop using the rear brake only. Notice that there is less front suspension compression compared to using the front brake alone. Also, notice that it takes a firm press on the rear brake pedal to stop compared to using the front brake. If you accidentally lock the rear tire, keep your eyes on the horizon to help maintain balance. For part three of this drill, come to a normal stop using both brakes. Notice that stopping distance is shorter and that there is an increase in stability compared to using the front or rear brakes separately. For part four of this drill, come to a normal stop by applying the rear brake one second before the front brake. Notice how applying the rear brake first settles the rear of your motorcycle and contributes to greater stability. For part five of this drill, practice emergency stops. The best way to perform an emergency stop is to apply both brakes fully without skidding. To prevent a front tire skid, it's important to squeeze the brake lever progressively. As load transfers forward, you can squeeze harder. From 30 miles per hour, you should be able to stop within about 35 to 40 feet. Braking drill number three, braking in corners. For maximum control, it's best to brake while your motorcycle is vertical. But there are times when you may need to brake while leaned. This is usually done when slowing for a mid-corner hazard or to recover from a too fast corner entry speed. However, you do not have enough traction to introduce significant brake force because a considerable amount of traction is being used for cornering. Braking drill number three will help you practice braking in corners while remaining in control. To perform this drill, Ride around the circle to the left in second gear at about 25 miles per hour. Roll off the throttle while smoothly applying both brakes. Apply more brake pressure as the motorcycle straightens. Downshift and come to a stop. Keep the clutch squeezed after you've downshifted. Do not use engine braking. Repeat to the right. The objective is to get a feel for managing traction while braking in a curve. But be careful. You must be gentle when braking in corners to prevent a skid. Number four, trail braking. Braking drill number four will familiarize you with the advanced corner braking technique called trail braking. Trail braking involves holding brake pressure beyond the point where you begin to lean and then progressively releasing the brakes as you reach full lean angle. Trail braking is used by performance riders to shave tenths of seconds off their lap times when riding on a racetrack. It is also useful for minimizing spring rebound and chassis pitch and keeps the suspension compressed to help quicken steering. Trail braking increases the risk of losing traction and therefore should not be performed regularly on the street. However, it can be useful for street riders as a way to salvage a corner entry that's too fast. To perform this drill, approach the curve and then brake smoothly yet firmly as you lean. Ease off the brakes completely before you reach full lean and then smoothly roll on the throttle. You must be gentle when braking in corners to prevent a skid. Practice these braking techniques often so they grow to be a natural part of your everyday riding skills. Cornering confidence. In this segment, I'm going to talk about one of the most satisfying aspects of motorcycling, cornering. After all, not much can match the feeling of leaning into a turn, carving the perfect line, and accelerating to the next corner. Part of the reason cornering is so much fun is that it's challenging. Unfortunately, 
Some riders find cornering to be too challenging. The majority of single vehicle crashes involve riders who were unable to negotiate a corner successfully. The first step in strengthening your cornering skills is to understand how your motorcycle turns. Counter steering. All riders understand that motorcycles change direction by leaning, but many struggle with cornering because they do not understand exactly how to get their motorcycle to lean. You may have heard some riders talk about using their body to lean their motorcycle, but body positioning does little to help initiate lean. The best way to initiate lean is to use handlebar pressure also known as counter-steering. The basic counter-steering method involves pressing on the right handlebar to cause the motorcycle to lean right, or pressing on the left handlebar to cause the motorcycle to lean left. You're not alone if counter-steering confuses you. After all, it is counterintuitive to press the handlebars in a way that appears to steer the front wheel in the opposite direction that you want to go. But it is true that pressing on the handle grip on the side that you want to go causes the motorcycle to lean in that direction. I talk more about counter steering in chapter 8 of the book. Here are a few tips that can help you refine your counter steering technique. For maximum counter steering efficiency, direct your arm motion mostly forward rather than down. Avoid pressing forward on both handlebars, which defeats the effectiveness of counter steering. Relax your arms once the desired lean angle is achieved. Only minor handlebar pressure should be required to maintain your cornering path. If you find yourself in a situation where you must lean further, press harder on the inside hand grip. Cornering drill number one will give you an opportunity to practice counter steering. Cornering plan. Now that you know how your motorcycle turns, let's talk about developing what I call a cornering plan. A cornering plan helps you make good decisions about your entry speed and path through the turn. You already use cornering plans, but if you're like a lot of riders, you do so unconsciously. A cornering plan helps you determine the locations where you will brake, turn, and accelerate, and is based on the corner characteristics, which include corner radius, road camber, slope, and pavement condition. A cornering plan also helps you determine the best path through turns, also known as the cornering line. The basic cornering line is an outside, inside, outside path of travel. This path provides a better angle of view and straightens the turn to help preserve traction. One variation on the basic cornering line is the delayed apex line. The delayed apex line usually requires a delayed turn-in location and a quicker, more forceful counter steer. This path allows you to see even farther into the turn and provides the added benefit of pointing your motorcycle toward the curve's exit rather than at the edge of the road. This is particularly helpful when managing curves that get tighter toward the exit. Take a look at chapter 8 of the book for more information on cornering lines. Cornering actions. Next I will talk about the physical actions necessary to execute corners successfully. Cornering involves four basic actions. Adjusting your entry speed, looking through the turn, leaning your motorcycle, and accelerating throughout the curve. The first cornering action is adjusting your corner entry speed. Your choice of a suitable entry speed is determined by corner characteristics and surface conditions, as well as your cornering ability. The second cornering action is looking through the turn. Looking well ahead allows you to spot mid-corner hazards, but it also helps you direct your motorcycle through the turn. Visual direction control is the term used to describe the tendency to go where you look. So, look where you want to go. The next action in the cornering process is initiating lean. Counter steer your motorcycle by pressing the right handlebar to go right, or pressing the left handlebar to go left. Some corners offer unexpected surprises, which may require you to turn quickly. Master counter steering so you can turn your motorcycle efficiently and with precision. Cornering drill number six will help you develop this skill. The final cornering action is accelerating through the turn. The reason you want to accelerate in a curve is because gradual driving force stabilizes and extends the suspension. This preserves traction and ground clearance. Begin gentle acceleration as soon as you lean into the turn. Acceleration can also be used to adjust your turning radius and lean angle. Corner entry, 
visual direction control, counter steering, and acceleration. Get the cornering sequence right and you will be rewarded with a special feeling that only comes from a perfectly executed corner. Cornering drills. What follows are six drills to help you develop your cornering skill and confidence. You'll need a clear parking lot that is about 200 feet long and will accommodate a 100 foot circle. This is about the width of 10 parking spaces. Cornering drill number one will solidify your understanding of counter steering. Ride back and forth, weaving left and right using handlebar pressure only. Press forward on the right handlebar to go right and the left handlebar to go left. To prevent unwanted counter resistance, consciously lighten your grip on the outside handlebar as you press forward on the inside handlebar. Keep your arms relaxed and bent at the elbows. Notice that the more forcefully you push, the quicker your motorcycle responds. Also notice that the longer you hold the forward pressure, the more your motorcycle leans. Number two, look. Cornering drill number two will help you develop a habit of scanning well ahead in corners. Ride around the curve, looking across the circle. Use your eyes to spot potential hazards and guide your motorcycle on your intended path. Number three, entry speed. Cornering drill number three will help you develop your ability to adjust entry speed accurately. Approach the circle in a straight line and then slow to an appropriate entry speed using both brakes. Release the brakes and enter the turn by pressing on the inside handlebar. Look ahead across the circle. Exit the curve and repeat to the right. If you feel the need to decelerate in the middle of the curve, slow more before entering the turn. Number four, throttle. Cornering drill number four will help you refine throttle control while cornering and it will help you understand how throttle use affects your cornering line. This drill has two parts. For part one, maintain steady throttle as you ride the circle to the left. Relax your arms and keep your wrist position below your knuckles to stabilize the throttle. Exit the curve by accelerating to help straighten the bike. Repeat to the right. Part two, use slight, smooth throttle adjustments to fine tune your cornering line. Roll on the throttle to widen your line. Roll off slightly to tighten your line. Avoid abrupt deceleration. Exit the curve by accelerating to help straighten the bike. Repeat to the right. Number five, lean. Cornering drill number five will help you build cornering confidence by increasing your comfort with greater lean angles. Ride the circle to the left. Gradually increase speed and lean angle. If you prefer less speed, reduce the circle diameter. Look well ahead. Keep your throttle steady and your arms relaxed. Repeat to the right. Number six, quick turn. Drill number six will increase your cornering confidence by developing your ability to turn quickly and precisely. Approach the right edge of the circle at about 25 miles per hour in a straight line to make a left-hand turn. Delay turn in about six feet beyond your normal turn in point. Turn quickly by pressing firmly on the left handlebar. Roll on the throttle as you ride around the curve. Look well ahead across the circle. Repeat to the right. Body force. In this segment, we'll look at how body positioning affects comfort and control. My daughter Janine is here to help me demonstrate effective body positioning. Your motorcycle feels most stable when your body is an integral part of the chassis. This means keeping your legs comfortably against the tank and your feet anchored on the foot pegs. Your hands should grip the handlebars securely, but relaxed enough to allow fluid control when operating the clutch the front brake, and the throttle. Throttle control is an important part of skillful riding. Unfortunately, some throttle mechanisms are very sensitive and can make smooth throttle inputs difficult. To help achieve precise throttle control, position your wrist low to restrict throttle grip movement. You can also anchor your thumb or forefinger on the handlebar control pod. These tips are very useful when doing slow maneuvers that demand precise throttle control. 
One of the most important parts of your body to position correctly is your arms. Relaxed arms allow your motorcycle steering and suspension to respond fluidly to road surface irregularities. This preserves traction and allows your bike to corner predictably. Many riders fight their motorcycle's natural tendency to corner, which usually results in poor handling. It's the rider's job simply to initiate lean and then relax to limit unnecessary inputs that can upset handling. Test how relaxed your arms are by flapping your elbows. If your arms don't move easily, you're probably too tense. Positioning your body off the inside of the motorcycle has several benefits. It helps the bike turn, it increases ground clearance, and it enhances the interaction between you and your motorcycle. Shifting the combined center of gravity of body and bike toward the center of the turn allows your motorcycle to remain more upright for a given speed and turn radius. The most extreme example of body positioning is when a rider hangs off. This technique is very useful for high performance riders and racers who need maximum maneuverability and cornering clearance. Regular street riders can also benefit from hanging off, including cruiser riders whose low slung machines can easily drag hard parts when cornering. There are three levels of the hanging off technique. Each level affects cornering to varying degrees and is useful for different situations. Body position drill number one allows you to become familiar with the basic hang-off technique. Position your head and shoulders off-center toward the inside of the turn. Your shoulders should be perpendicular to the motorcycle and your chin should be over your inside arm. Strive for a position that allows your arms to be relaxed. Practice the basic hang-off technique by riding around the circle. Remember to look through the curve. Body position drill number two will help you develop the intermediate hang-off technique, which is useful when cornering a bit more aggressively. This technique is performed by simply rocking your hips to weight your inside butt cheek. Rock your hips to the left for left hand turns and right for right hand turns. Allow your shoulders and chin to naturally follow your hips. Practice the technique by riding around the circle. Remember to relax your arms and look through the curve. Body position drill number three will allow you to practice the full hang-off technique. The full hang-off technique is done by positioning one full butt cheek off the edge of the seat. Here are some tips for refining your full hang-off position. Position the ball of your inside foot on the foot peg to avoid dragging a toe. Lift and sit rather than slide. Find a position on the seat that allows firm contact between your legs and the gas tank so your arms can be relaxed with a light grip on the handlebars. Keep your inside shoulder and elbow low. You can even rest your outside arm on the gas tank for maximum relaxation. Your inside leg can be kept close to the bike or allowed to drop toward the pavement in position to drag a knee. Resist hanging off more than necessary. It may look cool but adds little benefit and will contribute to fatigue. And finally, position yourself early to minimize chassis instability at the moment of turn-in. Practice the full hang-off technique by riding around the circle. Remember to relax your arms and look through the curve. Hanging off is useful when maximum traction or ground clearance is necessary. But keep in mind that hanging off fully on the street is mostly a waste of energy and can draw unwanted attention. And if you're riding fast enough on the street that you feel you need to hang off fully, then you should consider an environment that is hospitable to fast riding, the racetrack. Shifting and clutch control. Smooth, skillful gear shifts keep your motorcycle stable and contribute to an overall sense of mastery. Downshifting. Skillful downshifting technique is critical for maintaining control because poor downshifting can cause your rear tire to skid from excessive engine braking. To avoid rough transitions, ease out the clutch lever slowly. This allows the engine RPMs to rise gradually. You can help the process by keeping the throttle partly opened so that the RPMs remain elevated to match the lower gear ratio when the clutch is released. Another way to elevate RPMs is to blip the throttle while downshifting. Throttle blipping is performed by quickly twisting the throttle on and off during the downshift while the clutch is squeezed. 
This can be done in conjunction with either a slow or rapid clutch release. The point is to get engine RPMs matched to the lower gear ratio before releasing the clutch. Upshifting. Poor shifting technique has less effect on traction and control, but skillful upshifting is important for providing smooth shifting transitions and a feeling of riding mastery. Some riders go through the upshifting procedure in a leisurely manner. However, this can result in jerky gear shifting transitions. The problem with slow shifting is that it allows the engine RPMs to drop significantly, which makes matching engine speed to the road speed more difficult when the clutch is released. To minimize excessive RPM drops, upshift quickly. Do this by rolling off the throttle slightly and squeezing the clutch lever only partially as you quickly click the transmission into the next gear. I have two shifting drills to help you improve your upshifting and downshifting technique. Shifting drill number one will help you master quick upshifts for smooth shifting transitions. Here are some tips to help you perform this drill. Before shifting, apply light pressure to the underside of the shift lever for quick lever action. Roll off the throttle only slightly and squeeze the clutch lever only about 50% of its travel. For even quicker upshifts and the least power interruption, high performance street riders and road racers use the clutchless upshift technique. This technique uses the same steps of a quick upshift except without using the clutch. Shifting drill number two what I call the double downshift drill, will help you master smooth downshifts. Downshifting twice introduces an extreme difference in engine speed compared to road speed, requiring careful timing and modulation when releasing the clutch. Ride in a straight line in third gear. Roll off the throttle to reduce speed, then squeeze the clutch and downshift twice. Ease out the clutch very slowly to re-engage power smoothly and avoid skidding the rear wheel. You shift hundreds of times during a typical ride. Strive for smooth shifting each and every time and you'll be rewarded with a feeling of oneness with your bike. Continuing Ed. The topics and techniques we've covered in this video are intended to help you manage your riding environment and achieve better control of your motorcycle. For more skill development and practice, I recommend that you sign up for a motorcycle safety course where you can get immediate feedback from an instructor who is trained to spot problems and offer solutions. Practicing in a parking lot is a terrific way to learn new techniques, but you'll want to put these techniques into practice on the street as soon as possible. Each and every ride you take provides an opportunity for you to develop your mental skills and improve overall control of your motorcycle. Even though the techniques described in this book and video are appropriate for the street, be conscious that the street has many unpredictable variables compared to a parking lot. Therefore, you must carefully choose when and where to experiment or stretch your limits. The absolute best place to develop and refine advanced braking and cornering techniques is on the racetrack at a track day or track school. Before you dismiss this, understand that these are not race events. Track schools provide a great way for you to develop your skills without the typical dangers of street riding. I hope this video will help you to elevate your riding to a higher level. Refer to the book for more details about the topics covered in this video. And don't forget to practice. Making these techniques a permanent part of your skill set takes continual practice over weeks, months, and years. With a bit of effort, you will find yourself experiencing greater enjoyment and confidence. That's what I call riding in the zone. <laughs>